Good morning, modern steaders. A nice brisk 16 degrees out this morning, but it feels nice because there's no breeze. That makes a big difference. I think that's Caleb. I don't know what he wants, but he's calling us, guys. I'm gonna change it up a bit this morning. We're gonna feed the girls. Well, I'll show you what we're gonna feed the girls. See if it makes a difference. I want to switch it up this morning and feed their girls their hay out in the pasture. Let's see how they like that. Maybe we can get them to use the pasture more in the winter time. Hope and girls, come here. Blossom, over this way. Come here. Come here. Come on. Hay's going to be down here. We'll get you using this area. There you go. That's where breakfast is going to be. You got to come out here. That's where breakfast is. There you go. I guess we'll have to let them do their thing without Tanner. We'll have to get up to the house. Come on, Tan Man. I know, you just want to play, but. Uh. I'm say, where's Maggie? There she is. Oh man, you guys gotta walk in the snow. Terrible, huh? We have to design a hay feeder we can bring out to the pasture and move around easy. So that way the goats don't get to eat the hay off the ground. Come on, Pluto. Morning, moose, ladies, and the ducks. How we doing? Some of our chickens are still molting their feathers. That one right there is starting to gain them back. But man, she's not very pretty right now. Wrong time of the year to be molting your feathers. I don't want to do that in the summertime, not the winter. Molting feathers means that they're losing their feathers from one year and they're regrowing them again. I believe they do that on their second year. I don't know exactly why they do it. If you do, leave it in the comments down below. But I bet you that's why our egg production has dropped so drastically this year. We'll have to hatch out a new batch of laying hens this spring. Reading through the comments in the last couple of videos, Seems like a lot of you like coming out to the back 40 and seeing what's been lurking out here. Some of you like the trapping aspect. I think a lot of you, my takeaway is you don't like the traps that we're using. So this morning we're gonna go pull them up. We're gonna set up a game camera. We'll keep an eye out and we'll see what's going on back here and what kind of animals we have coming in. We'll keep coming down and checking the game camera to see what we have for tracks and what we have on the game camera. This way we'll be down here, we'll be seeing what's going on. We'll just be, we won't have the live traps. So we'll pull this one right here, take out the cat food. Let's see if we can get it. Bam. We got some fresh snow early this morning, so be interesting to see if we can see any tracks. We'll pull this one. It does look like there's fresh tracks right here that got a little bit of snow flurries in them. Let's see if we can walk down and see any more. I am seeing some good predator tracks right here. I'm not sure what they are, but there's some kind of small game track. They go over here behind that trap. So I think if we set it up right here in this ash tree, in this direction, 
that's a heavy use trail for the deer and everything else. I think we'll get a good vantage point here. If we point it there, I think we put it there and we put, let's set a bait out here and we'll see what we get. Oh, that strap is just large enough. I don't think it can go any lower. The strap's not long enough. All right, there we go. Spin it a little bit over here. I'm gonna put it on. Yeah, that'll work good. Bam, bam. Quite a few of you are recommending use rubber gloves and try sardines. So we're gonna put sardines out down here for the camera to catch whatever's out here. And we can find out what it is lurking around. Oh, yuck, ew. All right, let's stick the sardine can right out here. I'm, I know where it's gonna be, so. Later on, I'll pick it up and throw it away. We'll keep an eye on that and we'll see where it comes in. We'll check that cam tomorrow morning. All right, let's grab the last trap right here. No tracks. Oh, it's frozen in there pretty good. Oh, not that good. There you go, cat food. Bam. With that little bit of snow, you really can't make out that track that great. I can tell it's an animal that has paws and claws. But that's it. So hopefully it comes back tonight and we'll be back in the morning. We'll check the sardines and we'll check the camera. This way we know whether or not the camera is working. If the sardines have eaten and no photos, we know we got an issue. I did just order another game camera so we can put two out on the property. So hopefully that one works and we'll have two. That'll be a few days. So we'll head back and carry on with the rest of the day. Girls are doing a number on that hay. I like seeing that you're enjoying eating it out here. That's where we're gonna be feeding you from now on. Is out in the pasture. Yeah. Yeah. I forget how much slower it is building in the winter time. You're slower, you're dealing with ice, you're dealing with snow, you're coming in and out, you gotta go through the doors because you don't wanna leave your garage door open and heat the outdoors. Ah, such a difference. That being said, this morning I wanna work on the front wall, I'm gonna do a double door system, I believe. I'm gonna do an arched opening way, like the like the firewood shed. So we gotta get that figured out, but we're gonna be using some Tapcon screws to hold down the PT plate. Like that, we're gonna need <clears throat> Seems like in the winter time, no matter what, you're constantly fighting the elements. All right, so we need to get an overall length. Ninety-one and a quarter.
All right, we need to figure out layout. So overall, to the four by four, we have 92 inches. So it's eight feet to the outside here. I need a piece of foam to nail on. My knees are getting cold. All right. Oh, much better. So let's go six and a half foot opening. So it's gonna be 78 inches. Get out the old calculator. I don't wanna do math wrong on YouTube. Let's go 92 minus 78 equals, we got 14. So if we do a double two by four, that'd be three inches. Three inches. Uh, and then we'll go. Seventy eight. That'll give us that. on hammer now. Battery's dead. This cold weather kills the battery so fast. We're not going in deep enough. So let's do this. Let's get the other side drilled out first. I like that. That sucks it in nice. All right, we're probably gonna cut that pot out in the center, so we're not gonna do any more tap cons. If we decide to leave that two by four in, we'll put some more tap cons in after. We'll use the rough sawn two by fours out here now. I didn't want to use them all up on the back wall. That's why I used the KD kiln dried two by fours on the back. Up here, we're gonna want it beefier, I think, because it's just gonna be a few two by fours on each end. Ninety-one and a half. I'm gonna square up the end cuts. It is 
bit of an angle on this, so we gotta go. When I was doing the concrete slabs, I put a small slope on the very edge so that way if the water gets in, it has a tendency to run out. They do that on like garage door openings. So I figured, why not for a barn? Makes sense, right? Battery operated framing gun would come in handy. Never used one before. The snow is falling. That was 91 and a half. Yep, 91 and a half. Wanted to make sure we had it held in place before we started going after it with the nail gun. <coughs> yeah, nice tight fit. Now we can get one, two cut for here. All right. So 69 and 5 eighths to the long side. All right, now we need to go 69 and 5 eighths. Before I screw anything and nail anything together, I'm gonna go cut one of them at 24 inches with two 45 degree bevels. So this way we can figure out our height that we can do here. If that makes sense. It'll all make sense in a minute. Stick with me.
Okay, so it's not going to be a 45 because of this angle until we get our 2x4 there. So let's just say if we do this, let's just say Curious to see what our max height is on the door. Ah, 75 would come down two inches, so it'd be 73. It's not too bad. Hang with me, hang with me. We're getting this figured out. It's all fun and games until you gotta do some thinking. There we go. All right. An overall length we're going to need. Is do 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 64 is more than long enough. So let's go see what we have. I feel like that's not level for some reason. I feel like we gotta come up with that side quite a bit. Alright, so we gotta go up like a little over a half inch. Mark it down here. If we can raise it up and see what we're doing. Raise it up a smidge, we'll be good. Under here, I bet you we got something. <sighs> Too much. Right on the money. I like it. So 72. Haha, <laughs> right on the money, guys. I like it. 72 plus an inch and a half. That gives us 73 and a half. Perfect. I think we're gonna have just enough two by fours. Down here. There we go. Full length piece. Long point sixty nine. All right, I'm gonna go cut that, and then I'll be right back.
get an overall length on the bottom so we can make sure the other side so it's 65 and a half sorry 56 and a half wow talk about reading the number backwards 56 and a half Tell you what, this jerky's are making a great snack. Mm. If you guys haven't seen the video of us making jerky, I'll put a link to it somewhere on the screen and in the video description down below. Delicious. All right, uh, let's get this sill plate cut out. It'd be easier if we flip our blade around. Bam, there we go. Bam. Nice. There we go. Get that back piece. Perfect. I like it. And that tripping hazard is out of our way. I wasn't able to get as far as I was hoping. I was hoping to get well sided today, but Took a little bit longer than I expected. Yeah, figuring everything out and just getting it all, all the angles and the height and everything right where we want it. But it looks nice once we get it all sided up. It's gonna change the look of the barn completely, guys. That's just gonna look so different. We'll get siding up and then we'll get it trimmed out. And <laughs> Oh, I can't wait. Yep. It's gonna have to be tomorrow, unfortunately. I'm gonna throw some stew in the crock pot and put it on low until supper time tonight because we have we won't be home around supper time to make it So good. Hey chickies. You guys stay. The goats have been out a little. Never mind. There you go. What's your guess? Um, four. Four? The new license plate. We just hung it up the other day. Oh, you're right on the money. Me? Yep. What do I win? Four eggs. Three.
The goats are being quiet. Not only the noisy. The like What's that? None of the other chickens look like that. One. No, all the other ones have molted their feathers already. She's the last one. That's probably another reason why they're slowing up on eggs because they're putting all their energy into growing new feathers. Oh. Oh, I thought you fell. I fell right. You did? Oh. That was not a good throw. There's Hope! Come here, Hope. Tanner scared her off. Hope doesn't care. Come on, Hope. Yeah, you tell him, Hope. You tell him. Say, I'm the boss. There you go. You would never know she's from Arizona. Nope. Time to heal yet still. Oh, beef stew on a chilly day like today is the best. Oh, it warms you up from the inside out. Well, we got the game camera set up. There's definitely something out there lurking. Those tracks that I saw this morning, I wish I could have got a better eye on what they were, but it's definitely some big predator. I don't know if it's a lynx, bobcat, or weasel or whatnot but I hope they come back tonight well I guess I shouldn't say I hope they come back but if they're gonna be back I want to catch them on camera and I want to find out what's lurking out there and make sure all of our animals are safe we don't need to be leave, losing any more of our livestock this time of the year is the time of the year that predator pressure can get really heavy because there's not much food out there easy for them to get a lot of stuff is hiding and hibernating and just elusive so they can really start getting more and more pressure on the homesteads. That's why we're trying to be proactive and make sure there's nothing that's going to harm our livestock. We, we put so much time, energy, and effort into raising these things that place things, our animals that, you know, I know we raise them for food for ourselves, but they're for ourselves. We don't want to be feeding the, the wild predators. So I hope you guys all understand why we're doing what we're doing and very interested in to see what we capture on the game camera and then we'll we'll get a better judgment of what to do from there so thanks for coming along on our journey with us guys keep giving us your feedback trying to figure this out let us know your ideas and we'll see you right back here in the next video at Lumna Anchors.